chapter 4. I'll read from verse 46, John 4, 46. Ole ofesha nimbe Verse 46. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said to him, Yesterday, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself, that's the nobleman, believed and his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible here is not saying that this was the second sign that Jesus ever did. No, that's not what he's saying. Is it really? No. If you look at that again, it says, this again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. And remember how we started? So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee. So probably the second one in Galilee. Probably the second one in Cana of Galilee. Maybe in Galilee. You say, why did you say that? Because in John 2, Now, when Jesus, he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name. Why? When they saw the signs which he did in Jerusalem. Okay. Because it's pretty easy to think this was the second miracle ever. I used to think so too. But so many had happened. And even before we go to chapter 4, if we look at chapter 3, are you there with me quickly? Chapter 3, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, just like sir or master, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So Jesus answered him and said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now simply put, Jesus was seeing the kingdom. Or how do you tie this answer to the question? 
are strictly deducing from that, if you're born again, you have access to the kingdom. You can see. Uh -huh. Remember in Mark 4, he was explaining the kingdom to them. He said, see, for you it is given to know the mysteries, but not to them. Why? So that seeing they may see and not perceive. There are solutions to your problems already. They're not just going to be to happen. They have happened. They are waiting to be made manifest. Isn't God wonderful? So let's meditate a little bit on this by the grace of God because I, I understand by the Spirit of God that there will be miracles here today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody who has never witnessed one before will witness one. Somebody who has never experienced one before we experience one. Amen. Why is he so confident? Because we are in his presence. You say, what do you mean we are in his presence? Because that's what the Bible says. What do you mean that's what the Bible says? Haven't you read before yourself that we are two or three or few are gathered in my name? Let me quickly explain in my name. That is the purpose of our garden is to worship him. It's because we want to meet him. It's because we want to fellowship with them. If that's the reason, why won't you touch him? Why won't he touch you? Listen, gentlemen, Christianity is easier than we make it. See, um, can you see that the fear that followed you in here is vanished? You know why? Because you have no time to concentrate on it anymore. Something else is taking your attention. What is it? The beauty of Jesus. The excellence of Jesus. The victory of Jesus. The power of Jesus. It's after the fire. His presence. Can you see now that no matter how horrible the demonic power can be, it can be easily neutralized? How? Have you forgotten? Come on, Moses. Make a bronze pattern. Of the, poor, of the deadly snake raise it on a pole and everyone who is struck or beaten by the snake anyone in the throes of death when they look they will live. It's that simple. And Paul says looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher. The devil says you won't finish but you are looking unto, you are looking unto the finisher. Come on, can't you see? The devil said, we will make sure he doesn't finish. But you are busy looking at the finisher. Your focus is the finisher. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good to me. So he came again to Cana of Galilee in verse 46. But before then, it would be interesting to take it from 43, a subsection of the chapter in my Bible is saying, Welcome at Galilee. It was welcome back to Galilee. Now, after two days, he departed from there, from where? I believe from Judea to Galilee. Yeah. But he said he had need to pass through Samaria. Yes. It wasn't a mistake. He had need to pass through Samaria. You know, he declares the end from the beginning. Glory be to God in the highest. And all the miracles that happened in Samaria, I mean, the whole city believed. The whole city. Right there at the well, an unbelieving woman, not even qualified by any measurement, turned around to be an evangelist. Right there. And the whole city came. You talk of successful ministry. It's all about Jesus. By the time she was coming, she got to town. All the men 
run after her to Jesus. And what was the message? Come and see the man that has told me everything that I've ever done. And the crux of the message, could this be the Messiah? So what if we preach the Messiah? What if we preach the Christ? Will men run to him? That's the question. Of course they will. So he had a detail and that happened. Verse 43. Now after two days he departed from there and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his own country. Where? Where was this country? He was coming from Judea. Because definitely he had honor in Samaria. And definitely he had honor in Galilee. But there was a place he didn't have honor. His own country. You know what you are familiar with, you despise. You know, it is said in ministry that if you want your congregation to really understand something, you want them to believe something, preach it ten times, and then call somebody else, a stranger, to come and preach the same thing. Or just call the person, and if by the special grace of the Holy Ghost, let them preach the same thing. They'll believe. They'll react. That's the way it is. Novelty reigns. But let a man sit with us for one more month. You level him to the level of a pastor. Isn't that, isn't that the way you treat your wife? Isn't that what the husband has become to you? What is common? You seem to lose value. But one thing about the Holy Ghost is that you will not let Jesus become common. Except you are not going through the Holy Spirit. What the church has done in history is that they, taught, they got a place where it was too common. A man thought that it's his own ability to unravel the person of Jesus. And so we had church that was full of knowledge, but no power. 45. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans received him. So you see why I said a man had no honor in his own country? Jesus. So why are you angry when they don't, when they don't treat you well? Are you bigger than Jesus? You know, the, the most problem we have in our homes is this. She doesn't respect me. Come on, man. You sit there in council with a couple. Listen well. I'm in between the line. All the man is crying that she does not respect me. She does not respect me. She does not respect me. All the man is saying that she doesn't hear me. I don't matter to him. He doesn't listen to me. He doesn't love me. No, she doesn't respect me. But the question is this. Jesus, if you respected in Judea, you, aren't you a koyao? You are equal in marriage. So watch how you define your respect. She does. I love her. But I veer in that direction to let you know that you don't have a problem. Don't escalate what is not a problem. Do you know that the day you begin to demand respect, you start to lose it. Whether it's in your office, in your home, in your ministry. What if you feel like Jesus felt that you're not respected? Hey, take some two steps away. You see somebody that says, hey, then that will push your ego again. Then you can return. Wasn't that what Jesus did? Is it that simple? What is? Did you, didn't you read? He went. He came back. And he went back again. And he came. Hello. What does that tell you? See, don't choke your friend. Okay, let's go back to this. If you are too readily available, sometimes you become a problem. If you are paying a visit, it's good. They will honor you, they will carry you. If after one day you say there's something, they say stay. Two days stay. Three days, they say, boy. She says, we normally go out at 7 a.m. So please, when you wake up, you can. So we are, we are out. Ah, carry your load and go away. Okay. 
You see what I say? Read the book of Proverbs. You find what I'm saying there. Exactly. 45. So when he came to Galilee, they received him, having seen all the things he did in Jerusalem. All. So you see, that portrays the fact that it was in the second sign. So Jesus came again, rather, to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Again, see how it was introduced here. Where he had made the water wine. You know why? Because signs are for unbelievers. And that's why signs will follow the Christian. And who is the Christian? He's a witness of Jesus. That's why signs must follow him. So he just came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made water wine, and there was a certain nobleman, some versions we say, a royal officer of Herod, okay, whose son was sick at Capernaum. They said some 15 miles away or 20 miles away. When he heard that Jesus came, had come out of Judea into Galilee, he heard. He went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. Why? So that means that even if it looks like death is about to strike, you are coming out. In the name of Jesus. Even when it is concluded in the camp of the wicked, even if your effigy has been buried as a sign in voodoo, when life himself dwells inside of you, you are coming out. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yes. I don't know what is about to die in your life. Or I don't know what you have written as death. Jesus is in town. He was at the point of death. This man had done all he could do. He wasn't a novice at taking care of his family. He wasn't poor. He was privileged. He'd done everything. Then the last bus stop. Somebody shout Jesus. Do you know that when people run into trouble, even those who say, I don't believe. You hear them shout, Jesus. The truth is that they believe. It's the last. It's the last cry on the lips of a dying man. Even those who reject him all their lives, when it's just one more second to cross, they realize. You say, how do you know? Because reality will face you. He's the creator of all things. So I've come to address everything at the point of death in your life. Everything and anything at all in the name of Jesus. That's why this morning I know that there are answers from heaven. This morning I know that many will live here with answers in the name of Jesus. He rushed to Jesus, say, come here, my son, for he is at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, isn't it amazing that everything he did, he spoke to him. Unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means, what? Now, the question is, why would Jesus say that? Because here on earth, it wasn't because he didn't know that the man really wanted what he came for. He knew the man was desperate, he wanted it. But here on earth, you subject everything to test. That's how we prove the authenticity of anything. Even God tested the faith of Abraham. It was introducing faith as it were. Then God tested him. After he now taught, now I have the son, I have the child. Now God himself has said, forget Eliezer, forget Ishmael. It is Isaac. Now Isaac was born. He was two, he was three, he was four, he was five, he was six, he was seven. He was a teenager. Big enough to carry the firewood that will roast a sacrifice to ashes. God said, give me a bunch of it. 
And he meant Isaac. And God said, God did this to test. So this was a test. Though he knew he was desperate, he knew he healed him. Remember the woman, the Seraphician woman, who came for the healing of the daughter? He said, hey, this thing you're asking for is not for, it's for the children. He said, it's not for dogs. He wasn't abusing him. It was a term that they used for the Samaritans. It was derogatory, though. You call it stereotyping. You call it racist. Then the woman wasn't perturbed. You see, the thing about faith is this it has a focus. It does. Otherwise, destruction was everywhere. So Jesus said that to him. Then the man replied. And what did he say? Sir, somebody just said to you, it's only when you see the signs you come. He said, sir. In other words, master. Someone in authority, politically, hello, legitimately, naturally, he was superior to Jesus. Hello. Someone from the state house, high up in government, maybe a commissioner, or maybe a federal minister, or a senator. He said, Sir. And you talk to him that way. He said, Sir. He said, What do you mean? The Romans were ruling. Herod was in charge of that area. This was his PA. Sir. Master. I know why I'm here. If all I have and have access to could give me solution, I will be here. Sir! Come and heal my son before he dies. That was his reply. Then Jesus said to him, can we read together? Is that it? Yeah. I don't know what scares you this morning. I don't know where the devil has been introducing fear into your life. I don't know what you think you will never get again in your life. I don't know what you think is dying or dead in your life. I'm here to tell you. Go your way. Your son lives. I say in the name of Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't have to say in the name of Jesus. He was the one speaking. Me, as a delegated authority from him, in the name of Jesus, go your way. Your son leaves. Oh my goodness, I feel the fire. Now you believe. Because that's the whole thing about the New Testament. In fact, I was going to be troubling my wife yesterday. I said, the whole business of the New Testament is getting people to believe Jesus. That's all. Nothing else. You can define your problem anyhow. Believe Jesus. Go your way, your son leaves. So the man what? <laughs> Somebody is about to believe this morning. Uh-huh. So the man believed. And what happened? And he went his way. Thank you. And as he was now going, his servant met him and told him, saying, Your son leaves. But this is, the, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is it, for, folks. Let me just... I think the challenge is believe. Uh, sometimes in my life, I ask myself the question. I say, what does it mean to believe, actually? Because every time they believed, something happened. So if you believe, something will happen. Yes. So what is it to believe? How do we believe? 
Because there are issues you've been praying about, have been praying about, have been praying about. And it's all about believing. Now, I probably won't bother myself much, but for the fact that I see miracles still happening. Sometimes, casually, I just say what to somebody, and they come and say, you see what you said? I'm like, yeah, you know. I say, solution to a problem of many years, physically manifesting. So miracles still happen. Jesus said, go your way. Your son lives. He was at the point of death. Go your way. He had come. And the Bible tells us he believed the word of Jesus. So what happened? He went his way. So the worry and fears and cares that he came with dissipated. And he went bouncing. But he left his son almost dying. Jesus didn't touch the man. He didn't touch the son. He said, he just said, go your way. Your son lives. And the man turned and he began to go back. <laughs> ah. And before he would get home, his servants met him and said, your son is alive. He's doing very well. So when did he start getting from? He said, at this time, that was the same moment Jesus spoke. So the man believed the word of Jesus, went his way, and got a miracle. You know why I sometimes ask if somebody has a testimony? Because sometimes we are ministering like this, and God will tell you that somebody has a testimony. Yeah. Otherwise, why do we gather every time? See, we are not pursuing signs. Get me where well. they follow us. Because people preach, if you run after sign, if you run after sign, true. If you run after sign, you'll be deceived. That's the truth. Because you have the, the arrangement wrong. The arrangement is this stay in the world, keep going. Signs will follow you. It will be evident in your life and the lives of the people. So you know, running after sign. It's expected. Jesus said, This is how you know that you are on the right track. The ones you witness me to will manifest signs and wonders. Yeah. Remember in Hebrews chapter 11, we're told that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when we talk of believing in this context is I have done this and this is what you get. You are yet to see it and I want you to believe. That's believe. I want you to accept it like that. He left his son at home almost dying praying that he wouldn't die before he found the master. He found the master. The master said, go your way. Your son lives. And he went his way. So, the Bible says, he believed the word and he went his way. So, explain it, sir. When Jesus said, your son lives, he received it as real. He received it as tangible. At that moment, he knew that death can't take his son. He knew that his son will bounce back. So he went his way as instructed. Go do something else. And that's belief. And that's what the Bible calls faith. So here, ladies and gentlemen, what is the substance of the things we put here? So the substance was the word. What happened to him that made him change the word? What is the evidence of the things not seen? The word of Jesus. Hello? Is somebody hearing me? Hebrews 11 said, By it the elders ran a good race. They obtained a good report. 
In other words, they fulfilled their assignment on on earth. How? Hearing the word of Jesus and taking it for so. To mean exactly what he says. Accepting it and running with it. We are made to understand that by faith the worlds were framed by what? The word of God. So that the things which we see, come on, were not created from what? From the things that are visible. By faith. In the same manner, in the beginning was the word, come on John, the word was with God, the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made that was made. What is, what is missing in your life today? What was missing in his life was the devil was about to steal and he had no way to stop him. He came to Jesus. Words were spoken. The words that created the system. You see, the thing is, that, is this. God did not create the devil, devil. Everyone but God is a creature. And every creature came through words. So why, do you, why don't you th- believe or know today that the same process that brought about everything can bring about the most desired thing in your life? Matthew 17, 20. You don't have enough faith. Jesus told them. That was when he came down from the Mount of Transfiguration and they could not hear the boy, the epileptic boy. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as the mustard seed, doesn't that sound confusing? You don't have enough faith. But you have faith as small as a mustard seed. So that means that enough faith must be smaller than a mustard seed. That's the confusion. So it's a translation problem. And that has created a problem for so many people. You don't have enough faith, but you have faith as small as a mustard seed. You could say, if it's as small, you could say, and everything Jesus did, he said. Most of what the apostles did, they said. It motivates your saying, faith. Jesus talked of great faith, well, you know, but he's saying here that even if your faith is as tiny as a mustard seed, that's something that if I hold this way, you can't see. I'm clear. Like, through your eyes. He said, you will say to mountains, whatever is constituting a mountain in your life is temporary in the light of faith. Nothing will be impossible. Nothing. I mean nothing. Nothing in the name of Jesus. Now, give me, in, give me in King James. And Jesus said to them, because of a what? Aha. For a very lesson to you, if you have faith, so difference. But New Living Translation made it in such a way that it is used interchangeably. And because we do that from time to time, we run into trouble with the problem of believing and faith. Because of your unbelief. If I were looking at it, they said in Greek, one is noun, one is verb. What is belief? Dictionary meaning. An opinion or judgment in which a person is fully persuaded. I am persuaded that nothing. Paul in Romans chapter 8. I am persuaded. I am convinced. I know. So, believing is opinion or judgment which a person is fully, fully persuaded. I went to say, being thoroughly convinced. How do you get convinced of a matter? Depends on what you hear. And what you know. In other words, experience brings you to such a place. What you have been hearing, 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 seeing and seeing and seeing. What happened to you, happened to people around you, you take it to be so. So with that conviction, we say that's your belief on the matter. That's your belief. That you believe that. I'm looking for an example. For example, okay, this is common. If a man jumps from there, if he jumps off, he will come down. I know. Why? I've seen it happen. That's happened to me. If I miss my step there, I'll struggle with the ice. I'm coming. Yeah. The force of gravity. But if I now say to you that if you step out there, you won't fall. 
I need to do extra work to convince you. But we've seen people, or we've heard of people in a forum like this, praising God and getting to the spirit. Like some people in the spirit, people are holding, they don't know where they are. They started dancing, they the spirit, and they dance, they dance off stage. And they dance off stage, and they were still dancing. They were dancing. They didn't know they were dancing. People were trying to hold them. They were dancing. They didn't fall. Why? Because they were in a realm that supersedes. That law. It's the same way cancer is healed. But it comes from believing what is. I'm not telling you to go and jump off the stage tomorrow. I'm not telling you to ask the hospital. Ah, God knows that you struggle with your faith. That's why the doctors are there. And God bless them. And they, they, they act in faith all the time. They look at you, they say, okay, the combination of the sun, this, this is what I think is wrong with you. Let me go, go up there, let me see, okay. Based on this, okay, please apply this and this and this. And they're waiting. They're saying, how do you feel? They come to the phone and they say, yes, tell me, tell me, tell me, talk to me. How are you feeling now? They are acting in faith too. So when people come in and just slam doctors and slam teachers and slam, I say, ha. Hey. That is foolishness. You get there by practice. You get there by conviction. Hello, are you hearing me? So what is faith then? I just said something to you. If suddenly we start worshiping God now, somebody dances off, wow. Okay, okay, all right. Should I go and desire to dance off? What do you want to, what do you want to make with that? How does that help you? Oh, that will heal you? Solve the problem in your marriage? Solve the financial problem? Why do you want to dance off the stage? That is carnality. And that realm does not reckon with carnality. So let it happen if God wants it that way. But you live by his word. And his word is clear. So, by his stripes, you were healed. I keep saying it. We keep saying it. He keeps saying it. I keep saying it. He keeps saying it. He keeps saying it. We keep hearing it. Then you can say it yourself. But now I need Jesus, but by his stripes I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. Yes, I'm healed. There comes a time that he believes it. But you know when we believe such things easily? When the doctors say, sorry, we can't help you. Say, Jesus! Will God hear you then? Yes. By his stripes I'm healed. By your stripes, I am healed. Conviction becomes, begins to come. And they hear testimony. And the testimony, they say, if God did it for her, he did it for him, he will do it for me. I will not die. I will live. And I will declare the glory of God. Why? Because you come to the end of the road. But by the time you get to know this, you won't have to get to the end of the road usually. Because you can just jump into the world. And because you are right there, now you are forced to act on a conviction. Now, what is faith? Faith is response to believe. I came to know that. It was your own belief. Because if you have faith as small as, small as you. So what does faith do? Now I say by your stripes, you are healed. Do you know this person was healed? This was healed. And the person gave a testimony and said, ah, then you now begin to do that. You know what faith does? What faith is? Now that I know that I'll be healed, then my attitude towards my issues we change when my attitude changes my words will change when my words changes my actions will change when my actions changes i'm getting to my desired expectation so when he said to him go your way your son lives the man that came with fear all of a sudden thank you jesus and he goes away see faith is an action Believing will motivate an action. The taking of the action is faith. 
That's why if you haven't taken the first step, you are not acting in faith. You are not living in faith. You are not working in faith. The first step doesn't give it all to you. You may take a thousand steps. But faith will get you planning. Like that hindrance does not even exist. He went his way. And that was it. Because I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe. Do you believe? Your husband will come. Your children are here. Your health is turning around. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Jesus himself is the word. What does the word say? He's my wisdom. He's my understanding. He's my light. He's my salvation. He's my sanctification. He's my redemption. Jesus himself. What does he say? I am the light of the world. And this light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comes. So my attitude will change from fear to confidence. What does he say? By his stripes I am healed. What does he say? The days of my life I will fulfill. What does he say? I will see my children's children. What does he say? It is in him I live, I move, and I have my being. What does he say? I'm complete in him who is the head of all principles and power. What does he say? My life is hidden with God in Christ Jesus. What does he say? If he has said something like the nobleman, go your way. Tell your neighbor, your son lives. I feel the fire. I feel a release. I feel a breakthrough in the house. Glory be to God in the highest.